People who live in Maryland will soon be going to the polls to pick their party's nominee for governor. The primary is July 19th and early in-person voting begins tomorrow. The Democratic and Republican candidates seeking Maryland's highest office are in an all-out sprint. Over the next couple of days, our team will speak one-on-one -on -one with the leading candidates on both the Democratic and Republican sides. Larry Miller kicks us off tonight. He sat down with the current state comptroller and Democratic gubernatorial candidate, Peter Prancho. Before we get started, we want to be absolutely clear. There are nine candidates vying for the Democratic nomination for governor in Maryland. We interviewed the three leading candidates based on polling conducted by Goucher College and released at the end of last month. Current state comptroller Peter Francho has consistently led the pack since polling data was released earlier this year, and he's hoping with more than 30 years in public office and wide name recognition, he'll clinch the Democratic nomination for governor. Thank you so much for the time today. Talk to them, man. Maryland voters have a lot on their minds this election cycle. Polling data from Goucher College suggests voters are concerned most about inflation, rising gas prices, and crime. And as leading issues, determining which candidate has the best plan could help the more than 30% of the electorate that remains undecided finally land on a candidate. It's really tough on family budgets right now to try to, you know, make ends meet and just afford to live and take care of families. Correct. What are you saying to the families here in Maryland? It's a crisis. We're entering a recession. The only question is, is it going to be a deep recession or a soft recession? If we're in the middle of a recession, what are you doing day one to help Marylanders? Day one, we extend the gas tax holiday. We have the money. It's affordable. We just don't have the political will. So that's number one. Number two, if we haven't by that time sent $2,000 survival checks out to 500,000 families that need it, these are families that make less than 50,000 with a single mother or father, or less than 100,000 with two parents, and they have kids. Then there's the issue of crime. We have seen a precipitous incline of uh, increase of violence in areas like Baltimore. We've talked about school issues and violence in schools in Montgomery County. There have been issues in Prince George's County. What are you doing to combat those? I have zero tolerance for crime. And so when these hot spots occur in Baltimore, Prince George's County, Montgomery County, uh, Hagerstown had a mass shooting uh, out, in fr out in Washington County. When these hot spots occur, we're going to move in the elite law enforcement agents uh, in the state police and other branches, but also the U.S. Marshal's Office, and we're going to collect people who have outstanding warrants. And we're not going to do it just for one time only knockoff. It's going to be every month for six months. There's also the issue of school resource officers. School districts in the wake of the killing of George Floyd demanded SROs be dismissed. Many were, but some were ushered back into school buildings after high profile incidents like the January shooting at Magruder High School in Montgomery County. There's this, you know, call from uh, many parents that they want more uh, school resource officers in schools connected to those communities to make sure that students and faculty are safe. Do you want to see more of that as well? Yes. Armed. Larry Miller, WUSA 9.